Hello, my friends. I wanted to start a series of short snippets of videos covering the basic things that you may want to revisit every once in a while uh, without having to scroll through my long tutorials. Or if it's just a catch up on things you haven't uh, really encountered uh, before, you know, the, the terms or the techniques mentioned. So the first one I want to cover is initial state. And I mentioned this sometimes, and I don't want to take up the time explaining it uh, thoroughly in the respective tutorial. So in case you haven't done a lot of simulation or dynamics before, and this is a little confusing to you, this one's for you. So initial state. Imagine you have, let's say, someone getting ready to wade across a brook or a stream. I probably should have, uh, you know, imported uh, a custom modeled scene here, uh, so it was a little more descriptive, but bear with me and use your imagination. Let's all pretend that this is a high poly, beautiful nature scene uh, where there's a river flowing and there's a character, uh, in this case, a rocket, getting ready to, you know, wade across the stream and trying to figure which is the best place to, to cross, pretty much. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that looks all good and well, but if we go to the first frame, it's like the riverbed is dry and someone is actually opening up the floodgates and after a couple of hundred frames, now it actually looks like a flowing body of water. But what if we want to take the scene at this point and we want this to be the first frame? This is where initial state comes in and that's pretty much all it is to the concept. Uh, and it's very, uh, I mean, pretty easy to grasp, but the main thing I want to cover here is the in and outs of doing this inside of real flow. So I want to jump back to the scene I had in the beginning because it's going to run a little faster. So here we go. We have a scene with a uh, kind of a, I don't know, maybe it's a fountain, maybe it's a sink and a faucet that's running into it. Let's simulate a bit and see how it all plays out. Well, let's imagine we have a character going to wash their hands or whatever, and the water needs to be flowing at the beginning of the scene. So obviously we don't want, you know, like a surgical uh, kind of um, body of water inside of the sink that looks completely you know, like laboratory, no physic forces whatsoever. We wanted to, to actually, um, to kind of have life. So I'm going to, uh, get rid of the stream for now and just focus on the main body of water here. Gravity needs to kick in and it needs to slosh around for a bit. And I have a bit of noise as well. So everything just needs to settle nicely. And by the way, if you're doing this type of thing, sim with the diverso, you need to be using the SBH particles. And what I mean by that is you go to the particles and the type and you set it to SBH, smoothed particle hydrodynamics, uh, instead of the default position based dynamics, which are super great when it comes to doing that kind of like, uh, having water flow along a curve, creating a splash, anything that goes into like a heavily art directed commercial or whatever, where you really want to be able to iterate fast. You don't want to do that when it comes to settling in a tank, because it's basically never going to settle. It's just might look like it's settling, but then it kind of pops. So it's a very fast particle type, but it's not intended for ac accuracy and these type of things where, where you're really dependent on it all to kind of settle. So that being done, you know, this is, uh, this is where I want uh, my domain to be uh, at the start of the sim. I don't want it to fall down and slosh around. I want it to be here. So now I can say make initial state and use initial state. So if I go to my product folder, you'll see that there's a folder called initial state. And here you see now diverse domain one initial state dot real flow particle cache, and it's a five meg file. So now if I reset the scene, you would imagine this goes back to this, but instead of frame 75, frame zero, right? Wrong. Well, that's actually because you have to enable it on a scene-wide level as well. So if you click the reset button and hold on the downward arrow, and then you just release here in the checkbox, you have now enabled reset to initial state. And you see a little dot in front of the word reset there, which indicates that this has now taken effect. So if I reset again, you'll see that we now snapped to the initial state that we created before. So this saves all of the positions of the particles and the velocities of the particles. So everything is just as it was on frame 75 before, but we can keep simulating if we want to. And now I can say, well, maybe at the beginning of the scene, the character turns on the, uh, the, the faucet or something. So now we can have that kind of start going on. Or maybe, well, actually the faucet would meant to be kind of have been running for a while. So maybe we want to update the initial state. So we'll say make initial state. And now when I reset, I actually have this as my first frame. Cool. 
Well, why is it uh, necessary to have it here and down here? Well, that's just because, just to, to illustrate this fact, I made another domain. So what if we, um, what if we want to do that as well? So, so now we have, for example, an initial state on the um, on the second object as well. Uh, didn't I? Okay, seems like something went wrong there. And by the way, when you're doing uh, Diverso, make sure to enable CUDA GPU if you have it, because it really saves you some time. So now I can see I have my uh, Explorer on the left monitor, and uh, I can see that it actually created the file for me, so now I can reset, and, 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 and there we go. So now we can keep simulating. Well, the reason it is uh, down here and up here is because if you have multiple objects, and maybe, you know, this one... Um, well, in this example, it's a double sync, and it's only using, you know, the 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 one on the left. So, so that one hasn't been turned on yet. So, do you want to use the initial state on this one? No, but we still want to use initial state on the scene level. So, we can keep it checked on the first domain, but we can uncheck it on the second domain. So, you have a per object uh, control uh, on an object level, and then you have it on the scene level. So, in case you know you wanted to scrap it entirely, you can just remove the reset to initial state, and now they they return to uh, to scratch pretty much. But, uh, you know, the file is still there, so anytime you want to put it back and reset again, you will snap back to that initial state. Uh, a few other caveats to be aware of. Let's say I now want to, you know, uh, change the resolution of this. So, uh, maybe I'll do it on the second object instead. So, let's now set it to 500. And now when I start simulating, the new particles are emitted in a higher resolution. So it didn't really cause too much issue here, but I want to bring that to attention because once you set the resolution, me personally, I always create another initial state. I kind of start over because it can create instabilities and whatnot. There used to be with the classic particles in RealFlow, there used to be kind of these interpolation methods where you were supposed to be able to switch between resolutions, but I never really got around to trusting that, to be honest. So I would just, you know, um, if I was only using the second domain, I, will, I would uh, ignore my initial state and I would simulate up to the point that I like and then I would recreate that initial state. So boom, now we have a new one. So that's the resolution. And uh, the other thing I want to show is obviously at some point you're going to get to, you know, doing your final pass or whatnot and you want to save, save computing time by not drawing every frame in the viewport and you want to go command line. So let's uh, enable command line and uh, just uh, run the simulation. So we have frame zero, frame one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna cancel out there. And now we see that all of a sudden our initial state isn't being used anymore. And why is that? Well, if you recall, we clicked the reset button and enabled reset to initial state. So what we really need to do in order to actually get the initial state on the first frame is to, in fact, reset before we start simulating. And you don't do that by default with the command line, so you need to go into the command line options and click reset. And now when I simulate this, it's gonna reset and then start on the first frame. So we can already see now that now we're starting with the first initial state. An option to using initial state would be using the lockdown um, method or the lock countdown um, before the scene begins. So if you want to do that, you don't really need to use initial state, uh, but you can say instead, for example, if you go frames countdown, you can say, I want to simulate for 25 frames uh, before the scene actually starts, and I want to use frames countdown. Uh, okay, using that really just saves me from going back in here again and clicking use countdown. And last but not least, another occurrence where you have kind of have to tick a lot of boxes is you have to lock uh, this. But when you do that, you see that when you reset and start the sim, you see that instead of counting up 0, 1, 2, 3, we're counting down 25, 24, down to 16, 15, 14, but we're not moving here, progressing on the timeline. And that's because we're actually uh, only building up kind of an initial state, but um, in the end, not exactly the same thing. So it depends on what you want to use there.
The neat thing when you're using the countdown is um, if you have a mesh set up as well, it only starts creating the mesh once you actually get into the actual timeline. So it's not going to create a mesh for you when, you, when it's doing the countdown. So here you can see that, you know, um, it's pretty much a similar effect to, to having the... So in some cases I usually use state, in some cases I experiment with um, countdown, especially when I haven't maybe decided what resolution I want to use yet. So once I do arrive at, you know, the, the right resolution, the right look, and I'm maybe doing a final pass, then if I had been using countdown, I would typically kind of um, create an initial state on the first frame and, and then uh, unchecking this, which means that the next time I simulate, it's not going to do countdown. So only when you have the lock clicked, it will do countdown before it actually starts. Um, so having said that, I think we covered pretty much all the caveats and in and outs. It's a little tricky, tricky to get around, but uh, it's really just a matter of starting to use these things, I would say. Keep in mind also, if you're doing something like Hybrido, for example, let's say that you have, you know, we've been covering Hybrido and we've been doing, you know, the first basic sim and then you have the sim cached and then you do the phone sim. But keep in mind, if you've been doing, you know, uh, 25 frames of countdown simulation or, you know, setting an initial state after X amount of frames and then doing the base sim and then caching that and then you want to go in and do the foam. Well, honestly, the information of what happens before isn't really there. So there's no way of actually running the foam sim for the same time of run up and have it progress to the same state. And maybe this is a little abstract to get around, but suffice to say that if you're doing hybrid or with secondaries, you have to uh, run the base sim and the secondaries at the same time when you're doing the countdown or when you're doing the sim up to the initial state. So I think I've covered it all. It's a little longer than I maybe intended it to be, but but it's still, you know, this is all initial state. And this is a reoccurring thing for any type of dynamic simulation, you know, f smoke, fire, cloth. You want to get get the scene to the state it's supposed to be in from continuity before the actual shot starts. And sometimes you need to ask an animator to get, you know, pre-roll to animate the character kind of walking before the point or, or the boat kind of uh, having the run up to where where it's supposed to be so you can kind of simulate that initial wake and whatnot uh, and these are all kind of like production issues that we have to tackle but that's the terminology and this is where the bells and whistles are in inside of real flow i hope you find it useful if you uh, liked the tutorial feel free to share with someone you think might find it useful if you didn't then let me know so i can improve in the future I would also like to see what you can come up with with any of my techniques I've covered. So feel free to share the word of your creations and I would be happy to, to spread the word in, in, on my social media. And uh, you'll find it here on the screen as we speak. So take care out there and stay, stay calm and keep simulating and I'll see you in the next one.